Today, I thought I would share some last minute gifts from the kitchen. I decided to make the house very Christmassy. I have bread in the bread machine. I'm going to be making my pecans. Uh, let's see here, I've got the cookies going and I also have a beef stew that I whipped together. And what else am I working on today? Also my chocolate bark. So I thought I would share some of these recipes that you can give as gifts for the holidays. But first, for those who ever wondered if snow really sparkled like it does on Christmas cards, yes, yes it does. If this is your first visit, I'm Linda Smith Davis with New England Fine Living, and my hope is to help you find your version of fine living, no matter how simple or grand that may be. Now, I don't know about you, but I know every year there seems to be one person that I wish I had a gift for. Maybe they stopped by the home, or if I was going to maybe the hair salon or the post office, and I want to give them a gift. Now, Every year I have done this and I want to thank my mother for this because every year she would have home-baked goods and candies by the front door in a basket just in case she needed to give a gift or if she was having a gathering they would all go off with a little hostess gift. So I would love to show you what I'm making today in the kitchen and after I'm showing a few snippets of the work in progress I'm going to show you photos of what they look like wrapped up because at the time I'm editing this to get it uploaded hopefully for today which is Sunday I will be packaging them today. If I didn't mention it already I will put a link below for these four little recipes that I'm going to be sharing with you but what I'm doing right now is creating a bain marie just by placing hot water on the stove and a bowl on top where I'm going to melt chocolate. You want to make sure that the water does not touch the bowl and you don't want to melt your chocolate directly in a pan because it might burn. Just keep an eye on it and stir frequently. You want it to get nice and creamy. Now this particular one I added dried cranberries after I poured it and then I did a second version you'll see where I put the cranberries right in and it was a lot easier and then I just added some cranberries on top so people would know what they were getting. Here I'm just showing you, you can see the water's at a low boil and heating up the bowl here, which is melting my chocolate. Once it's all melted, you just pour it in a parchment lined pan or on a cookie sheet with parchment paper, let it cool completely, and then you can break it apart and put it into bags. And like I said, I'm just adding some cranberries here so people can see it. And I'm going to show you a couple other versions. You can do so much with chocolate, but we've done dark chocolate with white chocolate with peppermint and pistachios and it's limitless. You add in what you like. Now for the simmering potpourri that I make, if you take out the evergreen, this could be given as a gift to make a mulled cider. This I happen to make with a lot of the dried fruits that I've done in the past. And the packaging I'm going to show you right now is from years past. I have orange rind in there and a cinnamon stick, apple and oranges. And once again, if you take out the evergreen, you could give this as a gift with a gallon or half gallon of apple cider and they could make their own mulled cider. I almost didn't make sugar cookies this year and then I sat and thought it through and I'm like how can I not make sugar cookies? I've made them every year. So I sat myself down, got my recipe out, actually off my website, and I made up a batch of sugar cookies. And I do love making them. I don't know why I was contemplating not making them. I'm just rolling the dough out of the bowl here. I'm going to compress it a bit and put it in the refrigerator to get nice and cool. You want that butter to actually harden a bit so that you can cut it and then roll it out and then use your cookie cutter.
While the dough was chilling, I worked on some of the other kitchen projects, but now it's ready to roll out and I'm going to make it a, about a quarter inch thick, maybe a little thinner, and I'm going to cut it out with my cookie cutters and then pop it in the oven. Once again, this is all going to be listed below the description uh, with links to my website for the recipe and the steps that I took to make these. These get put in the oven 8 to 12 minutes and once they're cooled I start to pipe them and fill them with frosting. Now this is from a few years ago and I want to let you know this was the very first time that I piped icing around the edge and then did the center. I loved doing it. Now here I'm using a brush to spread it. I've also learned now to use a container with a tip that if it's a little bit thinner it flows really nice and smooth. If you've never done this before, let me just say, if I can do it, you can do it. This recipe should come with a warning label. They are addictive. These are sugared pecans that, once again, I've been making these for years. I had a girlfriend, she used to come over every year and we would make them together and wrap them up as gifts. I'd put them in coffee mugs as gifts you know, the cello bags, boxes, they're just so darn good and well received and easy to make. So I've already coated them here with my egg wash, cinnamon, salt, sugar, and I'm going to put them on a sheet, spread them out, and they're going to be put in the oven on a low heat and baked for an hour. Once they come out, keep everybody away or you'll have nothing left to give as gifts. Okay, don't laugh and don't judge me, but I finished up some parchment paper during all of these projects of baking. And I looked at this tube and I just couldn't get myself to throw it away. And not even an hour later, I realized the tube would fit perfectly. I say fit perfectly, there we go, into the cellophane bag that I'm gonna put the pecans in. I use all size bags, but these in particular are hard to get items into, so when I saw the cellophane bag and the paper roll was on the counter, I had a little light bulb moment, tried it out, and it works. And you know what? It works so well that I put a little note on it and I saved it. And the secret's out. This is where I hid the copper fish while Glitzen is up over the kitchen sink. I hope this quick video gave you some ideas for last minute gifts. You don't have to go to the mall for these. You might have everything in your pantry or a quick visit to the local market. And then you can whip up a special gift for friends and family that come from the heart. Now once again, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. You can subscribe by tapping on the circle that's gonna pop up here. If you're not already following me on Instagram, it's at New England Fine Living. And our website is newenglandfineliving.com. Bye now.